Hello everyone. So this time I'm going to mix it up a bit with a tutorial instead of my usual gaming related content. Now most of you know I'm a filmmaker. Like professionally. I make commercials and promos for businesses. Now finally I had an opportunity to purchase a V-mount battery for my camera setup. That being said, I'm not rich and cinema accessories are really expensive. So today I'm going to show you how to construct a belt clip V-mount battery accessory that's sturdy enough to last years, but only costs a fraction of what the commercial accessory would cost. So for this project, you're gonna need a few items. A V-mount battery plate. I got mine for $12 on eBay. A small piece of wood. A piece of polycarbonate or acrylic, though polycarbonate is definitely recommended. A four pin XLR female connector or a male DTAP power cable. A length of two strand cable, at least six gauge per strand or larger for cinema cameras. And just a handful of small screws. As far as tools go, you're going to need a few. Uh, you'll need a drill, preferably a drill press, a saw, preferably a band saw, a sander, preferably a table sander, and a heat gun or torch, but preferably a heat gun or even a plastic bender would work great. A screwdriver and bit set, a soldering iron, uh, a drill bit set, obviously, a black paint, which is optional, but definitely uh, would make everything look a bit nicer, and a bench vise, which is also optional, but it'll make the bending of the plastic a bit easier. Great, now that we have everything together, let's get started. The first step is to remove the back plate from the battery plate and trace the plate on the wood. This is where you decide which way you'd like the power cable to come out of the unit. Once that's all done, we can head out to the workshop. Now that we're in the workshop, let's cut the wood to the plate size and drill the two holes for the power cable. Cut along the lines you traced, being careful where you put your hands. Now over to the drill press. Drill one hole down about 4 centimeters and one in about 1 centimeter. Try to make the holes connect, but if you miss, it doesn't matter too much. Next, sand the piece of wood all around to remove all corners. Now, while we're in the workshop, get your piece of plastic and begin to round the corners. Be patient, as this can take a while. Now, I like to frost the plastic with some very fine wet sandpaper, but this is also optional. Once your edges are rounded, go to your vise and start heating and bending the plastic. This step can be tricky, but take your time and be cautious not to push too hard. Once you're happy with the shape, let it cool and take it over to the drill press. You want to drill four holes smaller than the head of the screw through both layers, and then four more larger than the head, just through the top layer and a bit on the bottom to countersink the screws. Once you're done with that, you can take everything inside for the next steps. Now. Before we continue, this next part is very important. Anytime you are working with power and sensitive equipment, it's vital to do your research. Figure out the voltage requirements, plug type, and necessary adapters for your camera or accessory before building anything yourself. Like I said, this stuff is not cheap, and if you don't know what you're doing and you don't do your research, you can and will damage your equipment. My tutorial is meant to be as universal as I can make it, but always make sure you're sure before you plug anything in. I cannot be responsible for damaged equipment. So now that that's out of the way, let's actually build it. Now that all your pieces are shaped, it's time to paint the wood and begin assembly of the unit. Solder your 4-pin XLR connector to the cable on connections 1 and 4 of the 4-pin XLR. I already have a pre-made cable, so I won't show this part. Make sure to note which connectors are connected to which wires. Once the wood has dried, mount the battery plate to the wood. Next, pass the cable through the wood piece. Now locate the wires under the mount. There should be a red and black one. Red is positive and black is negative. Pin four on the XLR is 14 volts positive and pin one on the XLR is ground. Using another small screw, connect the leads, making sure you get the polarity correct and the leads are not touching. Next, carefully put the face back on the V-mount plate and screw together. Finally, attach the belt clip to the back of the wood with the four screws and that's basically it. After that's all done, the last step is just to test it. Connect the battery, and then using a voltmeter, ensure the power is exiting the correct connection on the XLR. Four is positive, one is negative. Now again, I recommend testing this device with a smaller, less expensive device than your camera right away. Thanks for watching. If you have a suggestion for the next tutorial, let me know in the comments.